Good day everyone! In this video, we will be explaining on what we have learned in Colreg. So without any further ado, let's get started! Anatomy of Colreg International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea It was adopted on the 20th of October 1972 and has been implemented on the 15th of July, 1977. Colreg composed of 41 rules and divided in 6 sections. But before it was only 38 rules until IMO gave a resolution on the 14th of December, 2014 and has been implemented on the 1st of July, 2016. The 6th section of Colreg are Part A General, Part B Steering and Sailing, Part C light in shapes, Part D sound and light signals, Part E exemptions, Part F verification of compliance with the provision of the convention. Colreg also includes four annexes. These annexes are Annex 1 positioning and technical details of lights and shapes, Annex 2 additional signals for fishing vessels, fishing close proximity. Annex 3, Technical Details of Sound Signals Appliances Annex 4, Distress Signals which lists signals indicating distress and need assistance Rule number 1, Application Colreg shall apply to all vessels upon high seas Colreg shall not interfere with rules made by an appropriate authority for roadsteads, rivers, harbors, lakes, or inland waterways. They must seek to their pilot book, sealing direction, or guide to port entry. Colreg will not interfere with operation of government-issued vessels, such as warships, fleet of fishing vessels, aircraft carriers, submarines, floating docks, and derricks. Rule number two. It covers the responsibility of the master, owner, and crew to comply with the rules during loading, unloading, and safe navigation through sea. Rule number three, general definitions. Power-driven vessels. These power-driven vessels are propelled by machineries. Sailing vessels. These sailing vessels are propelled by wind and sails to move. Vessel engaged in fishing, they are restricted in her ability to maneuver. Vessel engaged in fishing, fishing without affecting maneuverability. Vessel not under command or NUC, unable to maneuver through water due to engine breakdown or rudder breakdown. Vessels not partially under command. Difficulty to move due to weather. Vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver. RAM or ROM. Due to nature of their work, such as dredgers, salvage vessels, research vessels, towing vessels, unable to change course, etc. Vessel constrained by their draft or CBD. Power driven vessel, water depths restricted in her ability to maneuver. Vessel underway, using engines, making way through water, moves with regard to the current, not making through the water, vessel resisting current, resulting in staying in place, restricted visibility, fog, mist, falling snow, heavy rainstorm, etc. Wing in ground, wig aircraft, flying in close to proximity up the surface. Rule number 4. For vessels in any condition of visibility, rule number 410 shall be applied. Rule 5. Lookout means you may look out. For access, there is no collision. It will notice everything like weather. I like to know if there is ocean will take. Notice, shallow should switch course so that the draft will not constrain. At night, it is difficult to see 
that you should need to do out. Rule number six, every vessel shall at all times, indicating its universal application in good visibility as well as poor. How does speed affect safety? There have been very few collisions between stock vessels. Consideration of speed must always be borne in mind. As a closing situation may develop rapidly, a watchkeeper should be free to make a reduction in speed without having first to notify the master or engineers. This might mean putting the engines on stand standby ready for immediate maneuver. Particularly an area of restricted visibility. Rule number seven risk of collision may should be considered to begin when two vessels have approached so close to one another. In this rule, all available means and the vessels that is necessary to know if there are risk of collision must be used to determine. If there is, if there is risk of collision without using navigational equipment, you can simplify use your eyesight and use binocular. Also, there are some navigational aids that can be used, like the radar. Radar can be used to determine if there is a collision. With an approaching vessel, exist as soon as possible. Compass and bearing is also necessary. The change of bearing of an approaching vessel is the best way to determine if there is a risk of collision. In case of that, in case of doubt, risk of collision may exist. Rule number eight, action to avoid collision. This rule are ways on how we will avoid the collision in safe and appropriate manner. First, every move or action that will be made must be positive. We must ensure that our decision is correct, that our decision is appropriate to avoid the collision. Confirm to the other vessel that you know what to do and what action you will do to avoid the collision. In confirming your action, it will use communication by means of sound signals or VHF channel. Second, the action must be made in ample time. Ample time means take the action early as you can before it will close to the collision incident or accident. Third, be large enough to be readily apparent. This action means that you need to move or take action in large distance. And fourth, the vessel should know who is the stand-on vessel and who is the giveaway vessel. And lastly, always observe your radar and have a proper lookout in the bridge. Rule number nine, narrow channel. Narrow channel is a navigable channel that is restricted in its width, its depth, and unhazardous navigation. When approaching narrow channel, always stay on the starboard side. But the vessel is also required to use the middle part if and only if the vessel drop is too deep. The vessel with 20 meter in length, vessel engaged in fishing, and sailing vessel shall not impede the passage of the vessel required in the channel. Anchoring is prohibited in the channel. In this channel, the vessel shall not cross the passage of the vessel allowed in the fairway. Overtaking is also allowed in the channel, but the vessel must take action to permit safe passing by using sound signals. To prolong one short blast, means you want to overtake in her starboard side. To prolong, two short blasts means you want to overtake in her port side. By the response of the other vessel, sound signal will use one prolong, one short, one prolong, one short means it's safe to overtake. But if the other vessel responds five short blasts, it is not safe to overtake. And 
if the vessel is not responding, it is not required or it is not safe to overtake in her starboard side or in her port side. And when approaching nearing bend, means you are approaching a blind spot. So that you will use a sound signal of one prolonged blast for warning to the other vessel. Rule number 10, Traffic Separation Scheme or TSS. This rule aims to reduce the risk of collision in congested area. And one of the example country that is congested and has a traffic separation scheme is Singapore. Traffic separation scheme have three parts. And these parts are traffic separation zone, termination, and the insured traffic zone. Traffic separation zone is a zone lane that separates in which the ship are proceeding in opposite direction. This is like a traffic lane in a land that is yellow continuous lane to separate the way of the vehicles. This zone reduces the incident or accident in congested area. The vessel using TSS should proceed in the appropriate traffic lane. Keep clear in the traffic separation zone area. When joining or leaving traffic zone or traffic lane, make a small angle only. The vessel less than 20 meter inlet, fishing vessels, and sailing vessel shall not use TSS or impede the passage of the vessel required in TSS. But they are allowed in inshore traffic zone. Vessel engaged in fishing can use traffic zone. Do not use separation zone but if and only if you are in emergency or danger situation. Ram or vessel restricted in their ability to maneuver is exempted in this rule. Anchoring must also be avoided in traffic separation scheme. Rule 11, application for vessel in one side of another. At pwede din tong i-apply yung rule 11 sa sa rule number 11 to 18. Yun lang. Rule number 12, sailing vessel. Sailing, um, sailing vessel ay wind. Kunyari, um, kung ang hangin ay nanggagaling sa port side, Siya yung, mag, siya yung giveaway vessel. Pero pag press kayo ng direction ng pupuntahan, ang magiging giveaway vessel doon is kung sino yung nasa starboard side. Pero kung hindi nyo nadedetermine kung nasan yung wind ng vessel, kung sino yung may wind na vessel, siya yung magiging giveaway vessel. Yun ang rules number 12 sailing vessel. 13, overtaking. Ang rule number 13 ay overtaking na kunyari ikaw yung overtake kaila, hindi ikaw yung magiging giveaway, giveaway vessel tapos kailangan 22.5 degree ang sukat ng paglagpas mo sa above her beam yung, yung unahan ng unahan ng kabilang vessel tapos kung Kung, kung ikaw naman yung overtikan, kailangan maintain lang yung course at speed. B section 2, conduct of a vessel inside with one another. Rule number 14, head on situation. In this rule, if both power driven vessels are on the opposite side of each other during day, the, both vessel must alter their course to starboard side. And during night time, if both vessel sees a mass headlight and side light which means they are on a head-on situation, both vessel must alter their course to starboard and pass through port to port. Part B, Section 2, Conduct a vessel inside with one another. Rule number 15, Crossing Situation. If both power driven vessel are in crossing, the vessel that has the other on her starboard side must keep out of the way. And in the other way around, the Vessel that has the other on her port side must remain on its course. During night time, to know if the vessel is either at the port side or starboard side, the side lights for port side must be red and for the starboard is Part B, Section 2. Conduct a vessel in second one another. Rule number 16, action by the giveaway vessel. If a collision may occur between 
vessel, one must skip out of the way and one must remain on its course. In this rule, the vessel that must skip out of the way is the giveaway vessel. If the situation is crossing situation, the giveaway vessel is the vessel that has the other vessel on her starboard side. And in his head zone situation, they are both giveaway vessel. Rule 17. Action by stand on vessel. In a situation where collision may occur between two vessels, one must keep out of the way and the other shall maintain its course and speed. The one that would maintain its course and speed is the stand on vessel. Situations like overtaking, the stand on vessel is the one being overtaken. In head on situation, there is no stand on vessel because both vessels shall alter their course to starboard and pass part to part of each other. In crossing situation, the stand on vessel is the one that has the other vessel on its port side. If the situation permits, the stand on vessel may take action to avoid collision. For example, if the giveaway vessel doesn't do its responsibility to keep out of the way, or if the action of the giveaway vessel is not enough to avoid collision. This rule does not relieve the giveaway vessel of its responsibility. Rule 18, Responsibilities Between Vessels, refers to the hierarchy of vessels that applies in the open sea. In the hierarchy, the vessel below shall keep out of the way of the vessels above it. A vessel constrained by her draft shall navigate carefully because of her special condition. A WIG craft or WIG craft is considered as a power-driven vessel. Part B, Section 3, Conduct of a Vessel in Restricted Visibility. Rule number 19, Conduct of a Vessel in Restricted Visibility, applies to vessels navigating in or near restricted visibility. During this time, the officer on watch shall post a proper lookout and the vessel shall proceed at safe speed. Using the radar, we would identify our quadrants relative to our heading. Quadrant 1 is 000 degrees to 090 degrees. Quadrant 4 is 090 degrees to 180 degrees. Quadrant 3 is 180 degrees to 270 degrees. And Quadrant 2 is 270 degrees to 000 degrees. When encountering vessels on Quadrant 1, 2, or 3, the vessel shall alter its course to starboard. But... If we encounter a vessel on our starboard quarter or quadrant 4, that is the only situation where we can alter to port to avoid collision.